Hi, welcome to my channel. Uh, this is going to be a series of videos featuring the build of a Cambria P51 Mustang Fun Fighter. Now these are intended to be quick and easy to build and as the name suggests, fun to fly. I want to try and make this a fairly concise uh, build video so we'll just have a quick look at the contents, quick look at the plan um, and then we'll just get on with it. Now there's the box of parts and it's, it's all nice uh, quality wood, uh, all nicely laser cut. So pretty much everything is provided in the kit, um, including the hardware as you can see there. Uh, the only thing you're going to need to get in addition to that is going to be the engine of your choice, a spinner, obviously your radio, um, and whatever, however you decide to finish it, whether that be with uh, tissue, glass cloth or iron on film. This is the plan supplied with plenty of detail complementing the comprehensive set of instructions. OK, so that's the uh, the brief introduction um, before we get started. Um, I'll just mention, uh, I'll put a link uh, in the um, description to their website where you can see details of all their models um, and how to order etc. Um, they've also got a, a very good Facebook group, um, which is great for getting other information, help and advice. Uh, I've used it already and, and it's brilliant, so I'd recommend that. Um, and uh, also be aware that uh, Cambria Models um, puts on displays at various shows around the UK uh, during the course of the summer mostly. Um, and I'll also put a link to uh, one of their videos on YouTube uh, where they fly, I think, up to... 20 odd models at a time so it's uh, quite quite chaotic so have a look at that as well it looks good fun okay um, start of the build uh, this is the first um, Cambria fun fighter I've built so I'm just gonna follow the instructions um, exactly I've started off uh, with the fuselage uh, as, to, as directed um, and the first thing to do is to add doublers to the fuselage sides and I've done both sides and then had four and a half millimeter square bolts the longer on to the bottom of the fuselage there. I'm also pre-preparing F2 uh, which is a laminate of two pieces of three millimeter ply so they're just gluing up ready for when I put the formers onto the fuselage sides. Right, formers 2, 4 and 6 are now glued onto one side of the fuselage. I've not put 3 in yet, I'm actually going to um, put that in at the same time as putting the other side of the fuselage on. I think that would be a bit easier um, in locating it and getting it um, sat at 90 degrees to both sides. So that's going to be the next step now. I have to say it's been really good, really easy locating the formers. You've got slots cut um, in the doublers which makes it really easy to locate and get everything just in the right place. I'm now gluing the second side of the fuselage on. Um, got formers 2, 4 and 6 in place. Former 3 is actually just slightly too wide. Um, it's about 70, just, bit, just under 76 wide. And the gap there is about 73. So I'm just going to have to trim that a little bit and I'll wait until that's glued and then I'll fit that afterwards, which is not a problem. It's just going to slide in there, so that's no problem. Now, while I'm waiting for that to dry, I thought I might as well glue the leading edges onto both sides of the wing. So when I get to that point, I've done both. So when I get there, they'll be all ready to carry on with the wing. So F3 has been trimmed slightly and that's now in place. Uh, the rear of the fuselage, uh, their long runs have been tapered so the ends come together. I've put it in the jig and glued in uh, formers 7 and 8. And everything's looking good, all nice and square, so ready for the next stage. I've now added the two radiator side panels, part number 24, and the 2mm rear fuselage sheeting. 
Okay, so the next step now is to add the upper rear fuselage sides, part number 13 on each side. Um, now, just a quick note, the instructions make reference to um, a snake for control of the elevator. Uh, that's clearly been um, updated because uh, push rods or push rods are now used to control the elevator. You have a choice here um, because you can either use a single-ended push rod or a double-ended push rod. Um, and I think the advice is generally that if you're using an engine towards the upper end of the range, then you would use double-ended push rod. And as you can probably already see, I've got a hole in either side of the fuse loads. So I'm going to go for uh, the double-ended push rod. If you're using a single-ended push rod, then you can go ahead and fit the two fuselage sides um, and then um, fit the, um, the rod afterwards. If you're using the double-ended rod, then you're going to have to fit the rod uh, and the sides at the same time, otherwise you're just never going to get that in position afterwards. Um, the other just brief note about the fuselage sides is they weren't quite deep enough um, and I've just had to extend them slightly I think you can see the join there along the end um, and the other thing is that um, you, we've also got a doubler on the inside there part number 12 which you also have to put in first um, so that's in place for when the uh, push rod goes through. Upper fuselage or rear upper fuselage sides now in place. Elevator push rod coming out the side there. You'll also see there's a push rod outside for a rudder. Uh, the standard build is actually um, without a rudder but I've noticed looking at the Facebook group that quite a few people do fit a rudder so I've gone for that and uh, utilised a push rod um, to link to the servo for that. Um, now I've also uh, fitted the tank bay floor, um, the triangular section uh, against F2 and also the uh, tank floor. Just to note about part 21, the uh, tank bay floor, that was about 2.5mm too narrow so I just had to use a piece of the scrap fuselage side to make it a little bit wider and then it was fine. And fitted the engine mount captive nuts as well. Now while some of that has been drying, I've shaped the leading edge which I previously glued on to the wing and now I also added the tip and I've done that on, on both wings. Fuselage sides part 13 have now dried and I've sanded down um, so they meet the top of the formers 6, 7 and 8 and that's where one of these comes in really handy that's perfect for sanding that down on top of that then goes part 16 and that needs a bevel on the end there where it actually marries up with the tailplane so the tailplane goes on there and then part 16 goes on top and meets up there but for now I'm just going to glue part 16 on, tailplane goes on later and just leaves that gap for that to slide in underneath at a later date. So I'll get on and glue that now. Fuselage spine 16 is now glued in place and I've sanded it to profile for the top of the fuselage. Next we're going to fit um, former 5 in that position there and then front fuselage sides then go on there. There is also a doubler to go inside between this new front former and the back former and that's got a, quite a curve on it in there. So this is the, the two doublers here which I've wrapped around a bottle for the moment and damped them because I want to just pre-bend them so that they fit in there nicely. I've tried to put them in there dry and they pull that out of shape a little bit so I'm gonna um, let that dry and pre-bend them and then hopefully there'll be a, a, a better fit in, in there 
and not pull it out of shape. So that will be the next step. Okay, I've pre-shaped um, the doublers for the front fuselage size and I've actually glued those in position. I've done this in a slightly different order to the instructions. The instructions say fit form of five first, which has got a slightly forward leaning angle to it, um, which is a bit difficult to determine just by gluing it in there. There's nothing to actually hold it in the right angle. So I've fitted the doublers first, then I'm going to fit the fuselage sides, uh, which go on there like that, and they just marry up really nicely, and that helps to hold the, the doubler being in place, helps to hold the fuselage side just in the right place. And once I've done both those sides, then I can then I should fit um, former five, and I'll be able to get it at just the right angle forward leaning angle as on the plan so that's what I'm going to be doing next so the front fuselage sides are on I've got the, the doublers are in and former F5 is in it's all taped up and clamped and now dry so I'm going to leave that for one side what I've been doing while that's drying is I've been marking out the wings to cut out the ailerons use a supplied template to mark out um, to mark out the ailerons on each wing be careful don't do what I do and, <laughs> and then you mark them out incorrectly and uh, had one wing one way and one the other way so just be careful when you do that pay attention it's marked on here where the leading edge is where the root and where the tip is so just double check what you're doing uh, as they say measure twice and uh, cut once so uh, that should be okay now so I've cut the ailerons out of each wing now um, and I did that using a junior hacksaw to cut the sections that went across the wing each end and a scalpel running down really as suggested by the instructions the instructions say a razor saw possibly but uh, mine's not deep enough to go the full width so I used a junior hacksaw which worked out fine, but you must use a scalpel or modelling knife running along uh, the wing. doesn't mention it in the instructions, but it is on the plan. Um, you need 6mm cap strip for the back of the aileron and 2mm end caps for each aileron. Right, we'll finish part one there and uh, we'll pick it up again in part two. See you then.